Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to go over why I think liquid chlorine is the best sanitizer that you can use for your pool. I'm going to compare it to the other sanitizers that are on the market. And you'll see after listening to this podcast why liquid chlorine is by far the best sanitizer you can use. This episode of the Pool Guy Podcast Show is brought to you by Jobber. Jobber is your business's command center. The easy-to-use app powers your sales, operations, and customer service all in one place. Go check them out at getjobber.com forward slash im forward slash pool to receive 20% off your first six months. First, I'll just explain what a sanitizer is in your pool. You hear this mainly, people will say you just need to add chlorine to your pool and they lump everything in when they say the word chlorine. That could be liquid or shock or the trichlor tablets. And basically what a chlorine will do is sanitize your pool which is kill all living microorganisms that are in the pool that could cause diseases. And also the chlorine should disinfect the pool. And all the chlorines that I'm going to mention in this particular podcast also disinfect the water, which they kill all disease-causing organisms. And then they should oxidize the pool. And this is a process where the nitrogen, ammonia, and all the other contaminants that would make the water cloudy are removed or destroyed by the chlorine that you put in the pool. So back when I first started doing service back in the early 90s, um, chlorine gas was very popular. You would see them drive around your neighborhood and there are these trucks with the silver bullet kind of tanks, kind of like the CO2 tanks you see um, in restaurants for the soda machines. And this would be chlorine gas and they would just go to your pool and they would pump the gas into the water and would sanitize the pool that way. It was probably the most effective way to do it, but then there's regulations. Um, California has a lot of regulations, and I don't think I've seen anyone with chlorine gas in a while in my area. The last time I saw one was maybe four or five years ago, so it's become unpopular to use chlorine gas, but that probably is, besides the liquid chlorine, the best way um, to sanitize your water. It was a great method and people would just have the gas, chlorine gas service come to their pool once a week and uh, put the the chlorine gas into the water directly. And I guess the closest thing we have to that in the industry now is the saltwater generator, saltwater pool. And I'll touch on that a little bit later in the podcast, how the saltwater generator produces the chlorine for the pool, very similar to the chlorine gas that would be delivered to your pool. I'm not going to go very deep into the chemistry of liquid chlorine or the other shocks that are used for sanitizers that you can use in your pool. Basically, the HOCI is the killing uh, part of the liquid chlorine, and it's the element that actually disinfects the pool. And you can look it up online, and you can read all about how um, this particular part of the um, killing factor of liquid chlorine is the best, also part of chlorine gas. That's the kill, killing element in there that will sanitize and disinfect your pool. And before I get too far into the podcast, I'd just like to mention that along with the sanitizer you choose, the pH also, the pH level in the water will also affect how effective um, the sanitizer works in the pool. For instance, with liquid chlorine, if the pH is above 8.0, 8.2 in the pool, the killing uh, portion of the HO, of the chlorine HOCI works a lot slower. It's still going to destroy the microorganisms and um, the disease carrying uh, organisms, but at a much slower rate than if it had a pH of like 7.4 or 7.2. Um, so there's more killing chlorine in a pool with lower pH than a pool with higher pH. One reason why public pools, they're really particular about the pH in there. The health department wants the pH kept at you know, 7.4 to 7.6 because they know that the killing element in the chlorine is much more effective in a lower pH. So if you keep your pH between 7.4 and 7.8, 7.6 is probably the most ideal. The chlorine will be much more effective in the pool. And that's one reason why if the pool has very high cyanuric acid. And if you don't know what cyanuric acid is, it's otherwise known as conditioner. And it's a product that's added to the pool to help protect the chlorine from being burned off by the sun's UV rays. The sun's UV rays are very powerful. 
back in the day before conditioner, you would have to add chlorine every day to the pool. So you would have someone come out and put chlorine in or you would do it yourself. And again, not to get too much into the chemistry on a higher level, basically the cyanuric acid in the pool, the molecules will bond and unbond with the chlorine molecules, protecting it from the UV rays. And that's why if you have very high cyanuric acid levels, 100 parts per million or higher, it slows down the bonding and unbonding of the chlorine, which makes the chlorine less effective. You'll see more algae in pools with high cyanuric acid, and you need to keep the chlorine level at a much higher level for it to be effective because the fact that it slows down um, the effectiveness of the chlorine because as the cyanuric acid level gets higher, the bonding and unbonding slows down and it's, it actually weakens or makes the chlorine less effective. You hear terms like chlorine lock thrown out there when this happens, but it's basically the fact that cyanuric acid is just too high in the pool causing the chlorine to be less effective. Not that it's not effective, it's just less effective in doing what it's supposed to do. So the pH and the cyanuric acid level are two factors you have to also address when you're thinking or talking about the different sanitizers that I'm going to mention here in this podcast. So why do I think liquid chlorine is best? I did a small podcast on liquid chlorine and how people think that it's weaker because if you look at the container of the liquid chlorine, it's going to say 12.5% chlorine, which, you know, a bag of shock, some bags of shock are 69% chlorine, the trichlor is 99% chlorine, so you're going to think that because liquid chlorine is 12.5 and it's a big gallon, it's weaker, but technically it's about as strong or stronger than a one pound bag of shock because in liquid form you, you measure the chlorine differently than in powdered form. So if you were to convert that, like for instance a salt water generator, if you let it run for 24 hours it'll produce you know one pound of chlorine which is equivalent to one gallon of 12.5 percent liquid chlorine. So the liquid chlorine is no weaker than the other products out there, the dichlor, trichlor shock, and calhypo. It's actually very strong and you know it's an excellent way to sanitize your pool because number one, it's very easy to use. It comes in a liquid form and it's safe for all pool surfaces and you would just pour it in the pool and it disperses immediately and starts to take effect. There are no other additives or elements in the liquid chlorine. For instance, the other uh, shocks and chlorines I'll talk about contain um, cyanuric acid in most cases. And so what happens when you add the liquid chlorine to the pool, it doesn't raise your cyanuric acid level or conditioner level in the pool. It will raise the pH slightly, but there's new research out saying that the chlorine bounce you, the, that's created by liquid chlorine is short-lived and the pH will drop back down by itself. The old school thinking was that it raised your pH and so you'd have to add some muriatic acid right after adding liquid chlorine. But the new school of thought is that it doesn't really raise the pH. It, if, if it does raise it, it doesn't raise it for a long period of time. So um, with that in mind, the chlorine has very little effect on the pH, no effect on a cyanuric acid level. And besides that, it's very easy to use. You just pour it in the pool. Whenever I'm treating a pool for algae, I, I like to use the liquid chlorine as a sanitizer to bring up the chlorine level and also to use along with any kind of a sodium bromide product that I use in the pool. So it's very safe, fast acting, and doesn't affect the water. Now, some of the cons are, since it doesn't have any cyanuric acid in it, it'll break down very quickly unless your cyanuric acid level in your pool is between 30 and 80 parts per million. Um, typically, most people keep their cyanuric acid level between 30 and 50, so that's perfectly fine. A good rule of thumb is that if you want your chlorine level to be at three parts per million in your pool all week long, you need to have 30 parts per million of, of conditioner. If you want your chlorine level to be at five parts per million, you should have your cyanuric acid level at 50 parts per million. Because if you have it at 30 parts per million, it won't protect the chlorine as you're adding it to raise it above that point. So a good rule of thumb, I say, is keep your chlorine cyanuric acid level at 50 parts per million. If you have a salt water pool, the new school of thought is to keep it at 80 parts per million. And this is based on the fact that the chlorine produced by the salt water generator is not as much chlorine as people had previously thought. And people aren't running their pools with a standard speed pump anymore, so you're using a variable speed pump. And generators aren't producing the chlorine at the level that it would be with a standard speed pump running a very long time. So the higher cyanuric acid level in a salt water pool helps to protect the chlorine longer. 
in that case. But in a typical pool, 30 to 50 parts per million is perfectly fine. And I'd like to pause right here for a second in this podcast. I mentioned Jobber at the beginning, and you may be wondering what kind of business does Jobber help? Jobber will help a wide range of home services, including plumbing, painting, roofing, landscaping and lawn care, pest control, snow removal, general contracting, just to name a few, of course, including pool service. Basically, if you operate a business that provides a service to a customer at their property, Jobber can help. Another drawback with liquid chlorine is the shelf life, so it's shorter than the other products. In fact, you know, if you have, if you ever use Clorox bleach to uh, do laundry and left it in your garage for six months, and then went upstairs to use it or in your laundry area, you would realize when you pour it in there, nothing's happening because it pretty much um, dissolved or got weakened by not being used. And so even though there's a lid on there, um, the chlorine will escape through there over time. If you keep the chlorine in the backyard, the sun hitting it will also deteriorate it even though it's in a container. So the shelf life for liquid chlorine, I would say, would be about one year, maybe less. Definitely you want to make sure it's fresher than that. And you want to rotate your stock if you do service. If you're a homeowner, you want to pick up the liquid chlorine at a place where you know they're rotating the stock. Now that Leslie's Pools carries liquid chlorine at a lot of the locations, it's very accessible. And that's another great thing about liquid chlorine. You can find it just about anywhere at Home Depot, Walmart, your local pool store. So it's one of the most accessible forms of chlorine. I know that in the Hawaiian Islands, they don't have much liquid chlorine available. But here stateside, you can find it just about anywhere you go. If you can't find liquid chlorine in your area, you can definitely use bleach. You want to make sure the bleach has no additives, it's unscented, and it works perfectly fine. It has the same exact ingredients as liquid chlorine if it's not scented or has any kind of additives to it. So it has the same HOCI killing factor as liquid chlorine. However, you're going to find the percentage of the chlorine in there to be about 6% in most cases with the liquid uh, bleach. So if you can find liquid chlorine, it's much better than liquid bleach because of the fact that the bleach is a much weaker um, dosage of the chlorine, has a much weaker dosage of the chlorine in it than the liquid chlorine. And before I go even further, you might want to download this app. It's called the Pool Calculator. And this is a great app to input the size of your pool, your current chlorine level in your pool. If you test it at one part per million and you want to bring it up to three parts per million, this app will tell you how much liquid chlorine to add per percentage and you can uh, follow this exactly depending you gotta make sure you have the size of your pool inputted correctly and you would add just the amount that it tells you to and it'll raise it to the point that you want it to so it's great to have this modern technology available you don't have to look at a chart and figure out how much chlorine to add you just put the numbers into the app and it'll tell you exactly how much liquid chlorine to add to the pool to bring it up from one part, 1.5 parts per million to 3 parts per million. So it's the pool calculator. Just go to poolcalculator.com and you can get that app. I use it all the time. It's a great way to calculate your dosage. So how does liquid chlorine compare with, let's start with Cal Hypo. Cal Hypo is very popular in Florida and it was very popular in California. The only, I'll start off with the drawback of Cal Hypo and, and why it's not quite as popular anymore here in California is because Cal Hypo will raise the calcium hardness level in the pool. Um, Cal Hypo, you know, one of the ingredients is calcium. That's where I got the name Cal Hypo. The full, the full name of the Cal Hypo product is calcium hypochlorite. You can get this in 65%, 69%, 75% um, chlorine levels in the, in the Cal Hypo. And it does add calcium to the water. So in California, in most areas here, we have very hard water because we have well water. And so adding Cal Hypo to the pool will cause scaling. You notice that right away on the tile line of the pool, where the water dries when the sun hits it, the Cal Hypo will contribute to this in the pool. Um, so it's not it's not the greatest thing to use in an area where the calcium hardness is high. It has a pH of around 12, so it'll raise the pH in the pool also. So when you're adding Cal Hypo, your, your pH will go up also. So if you add like three pounds of it, uh, you have to add a um, muriatic acid to lower it back down. Uh, some of the pros of Cal Hypo is that it's very easy to use. It has a very sh long, long shelf life, probably like two or three years easily. It's safe for all pool surfaces, but you don't want to pour it directly into the pool if you have a vinyl liner, especially if it's a colored liner. You could stain the pool because the Cal Hypo doesn't, um, doesn't dissolve right away when it hits the surface. It could make the water cloudy also when you add it to the pool. 
Um, if you add a lot more calhypo to the pool, the cloudiness will increase per pound as you're adding it. So it has those drawbacks, the fact that it could raise the calcium. Um, it also will cloud up the pool water and erases the pH in the pool. I guess one of the benefits of calhypo is that there's no cyanuric acid in it. So it won't raise the cyanuric acid level in the pool by using calhypo. So one reason why it's very popular, there's no cyanuric acid in there. They also make calhypo tablets now that will replace the trichlor tablets. And the calhypo tablets don't have any cyanuric acid, so it's not going to raise the level in the pool. So it's not a bad sanitizer. It's just not as good as liquid chlorine because it does affect the pH and calcium hardness in the pool and it will make it cloudy. The next is dichlor. Dichlor is very popular in California here. And dichlor is also known as sodium dichlorocyanate. And dichlor does contain cyanuric acid, hence the name dichlorocyanate. One of the nice things about dichlor is that it won't it's pH neutral, so it won't raise or lower the pH significantly when you add it to the pool. It has a slightly lower pH than 7.6, but it won't really affect the pH, so that's one of the great benefits of the dichlor product. It's also safe for all pool surface types and it's quickly dissolving. It comes in a granular form in most cases, and the only major drawback of the dichlor is that it has cyanuric acid in, in it about 45% by weight is cyanuric acid. So if you add 10 pounds of dichlor to your pool, you're actually adding about five pounds of cyanuric acid to the pool at the same time. It's actually a great way to add chlorine to a pool if you need to actually increase the cyanuric acid level at the same time. So if you're at a pool and you're doing maybe a green pool cleanup and there's no cyanuric acid, definitely put in you know 10 or 15 pounds of the dichlor to turn the pool around and you're adding the cyanuric acid at the same time. So that's one of the benefits of it. Another benefit is that it has a long shelf life of maybe three up to three years. So it's a great product to keep around if you don't have access to liquid chlorine on a regular basis. It's also very easy to use and a little bit of dichlor goes a long way. Like I said, uh, per pound is about equal to a gallon of liquid chlorine. And so if you're raising the chlorine with dichlor, um, you're going to have really good results with it. And it's certainly not a bad sanitizer for your pool. Again, the only major drawback with the dichlor is the fact that about half of it is cyanuric acid. So, you know, you're adding cyanuric acid to your pool every week when you're using it, bringing the levels up. And it could potentially bring it up above 100 parts per million pretty rapidly. So if you're going to use dichlor, use it sparingly. And don't use it as your main sanitizer. Again, liquid chlorine, going back to that, doesn't affect your pool cyanuric acid level or anything basically and it's a great sanitizer compared to the dichlor and the calhypo and you can see why I'm leaning towards the liquid chlorine because so far it hasn't had any effect versus these other forms of chlorine on your pool next we have the trichlor which is very popular in California it comes in uh, tablet forms and also a shock form and trichlor is known as trichlorocyanuric acid and it comes in uh, the sh again, the powdered form comes in a granular form, and it also comes in a tablet form. And I've done a separate podcast on the granular and some of the dangers that are you c that could happen by using it. Since it has cyanuric acid and has a low pH of about 6 or so, um, it's very easy to stain your pool with it. Now, the powdered form is very fine, so it's not going to um, do any damage to your pool. But if you're using the granular form, or if a tablet falls out of the floater... It lands on the bottom of the pool. It definitely will stain the pool because the cyanuric acid has a low pH. And if you've ever gone to a pool with little circles on the bottom, it's probably because a tablet fell out and landed on the bottom. If you have a, um, if you use the granular form and you put to treat black algae or any other kind of algae treatment, and you put too much in one area, you'll see that it discolors the plaster pretty easily because again of the cyanuric acid in there. And basically. It's the same thing would happen if you get a you know five pound bucket of cyanuric acid and instead of putting it into the skimmer like you're supposed to, you broadcast it in the pool. Chances are that cyanuric acid in the pure form can also stain your pool surface. That's why I really like the liquid conditioner. It's a salt based version, it takes away any kind of the staining potential of the cyanuric acid. So I guess I talked a while here without mentioning it, but that is a drawback of the trichlor is the fact that it has um, cyanuric acid about um, 
50% per volume cyanuric acid in a tablet in granular form. The powdered form, I'm not exactly sure how much cyanuric acid in, is in there. I haven't been able to nail that down, but it's only about 65% active chlorine. So I'm assuming that there's not as much cyanuric acid in the powder form as there is in the granular or the tablet form. So if you use a 50 pound bucket of tablets in one season, you're putting 25 pounds of cyanuric acid in the pool at that time. So if you do use trichlor tablets, you don't want to overdo it, overload it with it. You want to use a combination of the trichlor tablets with liquid chlorine so that cyanuric acid doesn't get too high in the pool. Um, so that's one of the major drawbacks with the cyanuric, with the uh, trichlor, the cyanuric acid levels in there. And I guess the only real benefit of the trichlor tablet is that it's so slow dissolving that you can actually use it to keep a pool's chlorine level at the appropriate level, three to five parts per million all week long by just putting two or three tablets in a floater or a tablet feeder. And the trichlor benefits that way for the service industry because we can put tablets in the pool and it'll hold the chlorine all week long. Again, the drawback is the cyanuric acid in there and the staining capacity of the uh, trichlor. So use trichlor with caution. You don't want to use the trichlor tablets in a vinyl pool, nor do you want to use them in a fiberglass pool. If you use them in either of those, your warranty will be voided by the manufacturer because of the staining potential of the trichlor and also because it lowers the pH down. So you want to make sure that if you have a vinyl or fiberglass pool, you are not using trichlor tablets in there, that you're using liquid chlorine. Dichlor is perfectly fine in either of those, but the trichlor is definitely a no-no. And you don't want to use the trichlor granular in many circumstances. The only time you want to use that is with a white plaster pool and you don't want to use that with a vinyl pool or a fiberglass pool. I had a pool company doing a startup, I think it was in Canada, they, they contacted me like four years ago and their tech had put in a few pounds of the trichlor granular in a brand new vinyl liner pool that they installed and they asked me if there's any way to reverse the staining and there is no way to reverse the staining in most cases on a vinyl pool. Um, it's just stained a liner. So the trichlor granular used with caution and definitely um, the tablets don't overuse them because of the cyanuric acid level in the tablets themselves. And there's one more sanitizer, lithium hypochlorite. We don't use it here in California, so I haven't really used it, so I really can't talk about it much. But it's also an alternate sanitizer. Um, again, in your area, you may use lithium hypochlorite instead of the calhypo. But here in California, it's either calhypo, dichlor, trichlor, or the liquid chlorine. And before I close the podcast, I'll mention saltwater system, saltwater generator. It basically makes the chlorine for your pool the same way that they make liquid chlorine at the factory. The salt generator or the salt system, um, there's plates in the salt cell that get charged by electricity. This converts the salt that you add to the water into a chlorine gas type. So it's basically a self-contained miniature chlorine factory where it manufactures its own chlorine for the pool. Um, it's a great way to sanitize the pool. I guess the only drawback with the salt water system is the initial price point, and then of course the price of the salt cells going forward because they only last maybe three or four years. And then of course, if the salt cell stops working, um, you have things you have to troubleshoot to get it working again, and you have to clean the cell to keep the calcium from building up on there. But it does produce the same form of chlorine that you would use for liquid chlorine. Uh, made in the factory and put in the bottles your salt generator will actually put it directly into the pool for you so it's a great way to sanitize your pool i have one in my house and i have about 30 accounts on my route with the salt water generator so it's a great great way to sanitize your pool so at the beginning i mentioned the benefits of liquid chlorine and some of the cons and then if you see as you listen to this podcast all the pros and cons of the other forms of sanitizers for your pool you can see that liquid chlorine comes out on top uh, in many ways, and I think the most important takeaway from here is that it doesn't raise your cyanuric acid level, doesn't raise your doesn't raise your calcium hardness level, doesn't raise the pH in the pool, doesn't make the water cloudy. It's very easy to use, very accessible. It's very strong compared to the shock. It's equal or stronger in most cases, and it's definitely a go-to a form of chlorine. I definitely highly recommend you look into getting liquid chlorine for your pool. Um, the price point is about or less than a bag of shock you would buy at the store. So you're not um, losing any money by using liquid chlorine. You may even be saving money by using it. So that's my take on liquid chlorine versus the other 
forms of sanitizer. And if you're a homeowner looking for more resources for your pool care, definitely check out my website, swimmingpoollearning.com. I have an ebook available for $9.99 and I have a lot of great web pages. Um, you can also find a video on my website that talks about the different types of chlorines. So you can watch that also. Um, if you're in the pool industry and you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one help with your business, definitely look into my coaching program. You can learn more about that at poolguycoaching.com. And for $10 a month, you can text me. Or $20 a month, you can call me. So the rates are really low to get expert help with any kind of problems you may have out there on your route. Plus, there are a lot of great discounts and benefits from the partner companies that work with me with the coaching program. So again, check that out at poolguycoaching.com. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Inyopools.com has been helping pool owners find the right pool parts in 2001. With over 50,000 pool parts in stock, order online today and have the parts delivered right to your door. Jobber is your business's command center. The easy-to-use app powers your sales, operations, and customer service all in one place. Check the description below to save 20% off your first six months.